All right, hello everyone. So in the last video, uh, we disassembled the input assembly uh, for this 62TE transmission. Um, in this video, we're going to reassemble it, um, getting the clutch pack completely back together. And then in the next video, we're actually gonna measure for clutch pack clearance. Um, we're gonna reassemble it because it does need to be uh, reassembled and slightly disassembled to be able to measure for clutch pack clearance on these particular transmissions. So um, what we would normally do if this was a normal overhaul is we'd start to go through these baskets in this hub assembly and replace the seals. Um, so the seals, one of the things you want to make sure of is you're paying attention to what groove that they go in and then their orientation. So if I use this lip seal as an example, um, if you can see, it does have a lip on it. So there is a direction that this seal needs to go. Um, it's very easy to get mixed up with that. What I like to do is I usually like to put my seal kit on one side and go through each seal one at a time. Um, that way you're, you know, you can size up the old seal to the new seal and you're not getting it in the wrong location. Um, one of the things to also note with uh, installing new seals in a transmission is to make sure you use transmission gel. Uh, so this is a, um, a, a, a gel that's used for installation of um, different seals and bearings and retainers in a transmission. It melts at very low temperature um, and, is, and is okay for most ATFs. Again, you want to check with the manufacturer before you start using that, um, especially if it's a ZF based transmission. Um, but it's, it's basically petroleum jelly. Um, they can come in different dyes. Uh, you know, either gold, red, or blue. Um, it kind of doesn't matter. Just make sure you're getting one that's acceptable for uh, what that manufacturer calls for. So I want to note too that, yeah, I'm not cleaning the, any of these components out. This transmission is going back to be remanufactured due to um, a worn bushing and some planetary issues potentially in the back. Um, so we're just going to reassemble it um, as it is because it, it is a dead transmission as it were so we don't want to we're just taking it apart and inspecting it for uh, um, video reasons um, so what we're going to do is we're going to put the seal back in so this is an example of what you're going to want to do you, this one needs to go in its top groove and you want to start to feed the seal in all the way around while also holding where you've been um, that way the seal doesn't want to pop out you can chase these around the drum real, real easily um, and, and not be able to get them in when you get to this point Usually it's a good idea to uh, kind of have it up and I pop it in with my index fingers and then you're good to go there. And then what I usually do is a little bit of trans gel to go around, lubricate the seal. What this will allow is this will allow the baskets um, that have seals to, to drop into them nicely um, and not potentially roll the seal out of its bore or, um, or cause it to get cut. So we'll start with our, our hub assembly right here. Um, we're going to put the first basket down. The orientation of this one doesn't matter as long as it uh, is fully seated down. Now this other basket, we do have to take into consideration that we have splines right here that we're gonna need to have match up with splines on the uh, input uh, hub. So we'll have to drop those down. The orientation of uh, these cutouts too will need to line up, but we can turn the outer drum in accordance. So line the splines up. A little bit of pressure helps to get it down. And then again, we can, we can line the outside drum up. And you'll see why these two cutouts need to line up here in a little bit. So I also like to use a 90 degree pick to make sure that we do have this down all the way so there's snapper and groove that we can actually get into, which it does feel like there is. So we're gonna grab our snap ring pliers and go to the larger of the two snap rings for the input assembly. Usually it's best to go with these machine cutouts to be able to get these down in. And sometimes it There we go. All right, that was 
a bit of a fight. So I usually like to go in and make sure it's fully retained by using the screwdriver and, and popping it all the way in to its groove. So should be good to go there. Line up the notches so we're good there. All right, our next step, which is again gonna be a bit of a fight. It's usually always a fight uh, putting the uh, apply piston back in. So we're gonna put our lower piston assembly down in. I like to line this notch up with one of the other notches. Um, it doesn't matter which one, but it's usually a good indication uh, for telling whether it's down all the way um, because you can actually see that it goes flush with uh, the inside basket. We're then going to use, put our spring, and we're going to use our apply piston down. Now we will need to go grab an installer for this. <clears throat> So this is our piston installer. Um, it has a taper to it so that we can actually roll this, this uh, piston down in without flipping the seal up or causing it to rip. So you're gonna drop it down into the drum until it's fully seated, and then we can use that to put our apply piston in. Now we're gonna end up using the snap press. Again, this can be a bit of a fight simply because the snap press doesn't press down a you know, straight vertical manner, it does operate in an arc, similar to like a suspension component. So you kind of have to anticipate that arc when pressing it down and get everything as a lined up angle as you possibly can get it. All right, there we go. So our snap ring groove is present. So we're gonna grab our uh, apply piston snap ring and get it into its home. Um, this snap ring too, because it is a snap ring that's under tension, under normal overhaul conditions with an overhaul kit, that does get replaced. So any of the snap rings that are under spring tension will get replaced um, so that they don't fatigue and break during normal operating use. All right, so now we can remove our piston installer and we're left with uh, the baskets assembled to the hub assembly with the apply piston in we want to look and make sure that it hasn't rolled up anywhere just in case um, again the transmission gel is normal it's not gonna hurt anything so we're good to go there so now what we're going to do is we're going to start to reassemble our clutch pack now again if this was a going to be an overhaul what I tend to like to do is I like to pre soak all of the clutch discs for 20 minutes and clean ATF. What that does is that um, gets ATF dug into the clutch pack so that when you start it up fresh um, and brand new and you start to back out and drive, uh, these clutches aren't gonna shear um, due to not absorbing any uh, ATF. So it's always a good idea to make sure you pre-soak all of these clutches uh, prior to uh, putting them into the assembly. So we're gonna start with our first underdriven hub. The underdriven hub I like to put in first, that way we can actually line up the clutch discs that spline to it, um, and the steels will line up. We don't have to fight it going back in. Um, so usually it's a good, good practice to make sure everything's spinning nice and free and uh, fully seated down. So in this case, we're gonna start with a steel plate first. Again, we're splining to the basket, dropping it down. Then we're doing a clutch disc, followed by another steel and clutch, so on and so forth. All right, so this is our last steel plate for the underdriven clutch. So next we're left with one more clutch disc and the separator plate. What I like to do is I like to get the snap ring in first. And again, we're, we're trying to get this snap ring down into the bottom groove. Um, it's important to note that the separator plate is separated between two snap rings and there is a difference between the two. So the factory has noted it with different style edges. 
but it is important to make sure that you're getting the right ones. So this is our, our um, one that supports it, that goes down first, and this is our primary retaining one. So we want to try to aim for the bottom groove with it, and then just kind of turn it around, utilizing a screwdriver to get it to snap all the way down. Again, trying to avoid having your hands in the, in the assembly um, usually prevents you from getting cut. So we have that in our groove. We're gonna do our last clutch disc, make sure it splines to the hub. And then the separator plate, again, paying attention to how it goes in because we have it stacked in the reverse order that it came out. We know that we're pretty good there. Um, you can actually see where the snap ring groove is. If you had it upside down, it wouldn't, you'd, you'd have a fight getting the snap ring in. They will go in, I've done it before, trust me. I've, I've made that mistake, but you wanna make sure that uh, you're getting the orientation correctly. Another trick I like to do if for whatever reason you have to like pause this overhaul or anything. Um, I take a zip tie and zip tie the assemblies together. That way you don't have any coworkers that are curious come and grabbing stuff and getting stuff out of order and the zip tie at least will, will retain it um, if it needs to sit for a little bit of time. All right, so now we're gonna get our overdrive hub. Again, making sure that our thrust washers and bearings are, are all good to go. Dropping it down and making sure it spins smoothly. So we're good there. And we can start with uh, clutch disc for our overdrive and steel plate and so on and so forth just like our underdrive clutch pack. Alright, so now we're left with our last separator plate and I have the wave washer first that we need to drop down before we put our separator plate in. Um, now it's really important, because I've made this mistake before, to get the wave, I don't know if you can see that on the on the screen, but there is a tiny lip that this wave washer fits on. You can get it to drop down lower into this outer basket. The problem with that is, is then it's not supporting the separator plate for underdrive. And what can happen is, because this won't be supported, it'll chatter around and eventually break these spokes off. And it makes a real cool noise. It annoys customers greatly, um, which usually means you have to go back through and overhaul this transmission again um, at your own expense. So it's one of those things to make sure you're paying attention to those really small details when overhauling a transmission. Um, and that's any transmission to make sure you're not making that mistake. Um, again, we wanna make sure that we're getting these uh, little dimple dots going down. This is also too why it was important that we lined up these two notches is so that this separator plate uh, is is down in, in between the two baskets. So this is going to be our snap ring to retain this underdriven separator plate. Um, we're going what I like to do because it is slightly sprung due to that wave spring, is I like to use a screwdriver to kind of retain it into the groove as I go around and feed it in, that way it doesn't snap back out of here and you're not just chasing it around the, the drum assembly. And we are in, so I like to go around and give it just a little pry up just to make sure that it's not gonna pop out. It's better to do it now um, than you know, have it give you a surprise when you go for your first test drive. All right, so next we're left with our uh, reverse clutch. <clears throat> Excuse me. So it's just two clutch discs and one separator steel. Um, the uh, splines for this clutch disc, the discs themselves is with the sun gear of our planet set that we're going to take care of in a, in a future video. So it doesn't really matter how these are, how these are splined at this point. Our reverse separator plate, which you're gonna need to press down to be able to get the snap ring into its groove. I like to use the back of a screwdriver because it's pretty soft. We're just gonna feed the snap ring into its groove. That should be good to go. Now, one of the things to note is I press down on the separator plate, which then locks these reverse clutches. Um, it not only makes it difficult to reassemble the transmission, uh, to assemble this input assembly back into the case itself, but also you run the risk of having a reverse already sort of applied without the hydraulic circuit applied. So you run the risk of backing it out and popping the snap ring out right away. So you can actually see the snap ring wants to, wants to come out just with, with prying it lightly on the screwdriver. So what you need to do 
because you need to go back through and pop up this separator plate. And we can see I can put the screwdriver in and my clutch discs are now free. So that indicates that this is released and um, when hydraulic pressure is applied to this, we'll actually be able to um, have reverse operate in a normal fashion. So our last step is we're going to put our pump assembly down and uh, making sure that we have the input bearing in place and we'll pneumatically check it. So taking our air gun and again making sure that we're at 30 PSI, which I'm not here at the shop because we're running 90. We have underdrive. Overdrive and then last reverse. So that is a successful overhaul of this input assembly. So what we'll tackle in the next video is actually measuring the clutch pack clearances uh, with a dial indicator. Um, you normally need to do that if uh, you have a rebuild that's uh, really, really far out or you're starting with new uh, baskets or a hub assembly to make sure that you get the clutch clearance correct. So we'll do that in the next video and then we'll start tackling the braking clutches, the valve body and the uh, compounder assembly uh, from the case. So appreciate you all watching and uh, we'll see you in the next video.